this demonstration, you'll learn how to set up and solve an inverse polymer extrusion problem in ANSYS AIM, where we can examine the flow of a polymer melt as it's pushed or extruded through a three-dimensional die. For this particular example, we'll examine a type of simulation called an inverse extrusion, where we determine the shape of the extrusion die based on the desired end profile shape of the extruded material. We'll use a geometry that consists of two connected bodies a body that represents the fluid as it enters and is confined by the dye, shown here in green, and another body that represents the extrudate coming into contact with air that can deform freely, shown here in purple. In this particular type of extrusion simulation, the extrudate end profile does not change. However, the dye deforms to become a particular shape based on the flow conditions of the simulation and the given shape of the extrudate. Due to the symmetrical nature of the actual dye, the geometry we'll use only represents a quarter of the die, so we'll be able to use symmetry conditions later in order to simplify the calculations. I'll get started using the polymer extrusion template. Our goal is to predict the shape of the die based on the current end profile shape of the extradit. So I'll choose the Determine Die Lip Shape option, create the simulation, and import the geometry. Once the simulation is created, I can see the imported geometry and the various tasks the template has created. I'll proceed to the mesh task. The template has already defined certain default settings. I've made some adjustments to the settings to produce a better mesh. I'll update the mesh task to generate a computational mesh. For this example, in the extrusion task, the template has already created a physics region, physics options, materials, and fluid flow physics conditions. In the physics region panel, the template has used the two bodies for the die and the extradit to create a single physics region with the polymer extrusion physics type selected. In the material assignment panel, you can change your material model from a Newtonian fluid to a generalized Newtonian fluid if desired. For this example, we are using a generic Newtonian polymer, so we'll keep the default setting. In the generic polymer material panel, you can also assign a specific generalized viscosity material model if desired. For this example, we've used the default settings for the generic Newtonian polymer. For the sake of simplicity, we're using a Newtonian fluid that exhibits a constant viscosity. For this polymer extrusion simulation, the template has already created typical fluid flow physics conditions. I've already set up the details for the various conditions. I've assigned this phase to be the inlet boundary with a specific volume flow rate. I've assigned these faces to be a wall boundary with no slip, that is, the polymer fluid sticks to the wall surface. This phase is assigned to be the extra exit condition, where you can specify the flow conditions at the exit. For this problem, we'll keep the defaults and assign all edges of the extra exit to be fixed and apply no force. These faces are assigned to a free surface condition, representing the open surface of the extra this body is assigned to a die deformation condition with a constant deformation. And finally, this body is assigned to be the extrudit itself, whose shape will be fixed throughout the simulation. The shape of the die will be determined by the solution. Since the imported geometry is one that represents a symmetrical body, and there are two planes of symmetry, I'll need to define two symmetry planes. Here I've assigned these faces to be one symmetry boundary and I've also assigned these faces to be another symmetry boundary. Now I can update the extrusion physics task to generate a solution. I'll keep the default solution settings as they are adequate for the present case. As the problem is solved, I can see the convergence of the main fields and quantities in the Solution Monitors tab. When the solution is complete, I can review the results of the simulation. Three contour results objects and a vector result object have already been created as part of the template. The contour results are for velocity magnitude, pressure, and shear rate. After I update the results task, I can review the results of each object. Here are the velocity magnitude contours. Here are the pressure contours. Here are the shear rate contours. The vector result illustrates the velocity vectors in the flow field. Here we use velocity contours on the inlet and the extradit exit surfaces to compare the initial shape of the die and the extradit, shown here in green and purple, with the final profile of the die. The final cross section of the die is significantly different from the one of the extradit due to the velocity rearrangement that occurs at the die lip. 
Within the die, the velocity is higher at the center of the channel, while it must be constant in the extradit where no force is applied. This redistribution of matter induces deformation. This concludes this demonstration of setting up and solving an inverse polymer extrusion problem using ANSYS AIM. Thank you.